Well, one of the downsides of this nuclear renaissance is that I think there are very legitimate concerns that uh, the U.S. is not going to have enough uranium. And one of the solutions to that that's been proposed that I think is kind of like fusion is thorium. And apparently thorium is more plentiful and there are certain advocates uh, that are very uh, emphatic that it is the way to go. And Richard, as far as I understand, you're you're kind of agnostic in this regard that the molten salt nuclear reactor can operate with thorium or uranium. But I, I'd be interested because I, I've heard other experts say, look, there just isn't the ec ecosystem, for want of a better term, in place to enrich thorium, make it really usable. But how would you comment on that? Well, <clears throat> in designing the molten salt nuclear battery, we have looked at all three of the basic fissionable fuels that would be available. That's uranium, plutonium, and thorium. So all of them will work in the molten salt nuclear battery. Since you're focusing on thorium at the moment, there's a lot of misinformation about thorium. Um, I don't want to go into it all. It's a, it, it, I can tell you that thorium is not a fuel that's ready to be used. Uh, who's doing most of the work on this right now is India because they've got a lot of thorium. We have done a lot of work in thorium starting back during the Manhattan Project. We have a lot of information on thorium. We know how to use thorium. We know how to convert it into a usable fuel. Thorium by itself is not a usable fuel. It has to be converted into uh, uranium. And you do that by putting it in a nuclear reactor and adding neutrons to it to make it into a usable uranium fuel. Um, it's also people have said that it, it, uh, it has um, less waste. Uh, it can't be used in nuclear weapons, so it's not a proliferation issue. Both of those are not true. If you look at, uh, you go back in history and you look at the early days of the use of thorium and the use of uranium, there was a large delta, the difference between the amount of uh, waste, let's call it, from thorium and waste from uranium. And it, thorium looked better. Today, they're almost equal. So thorium, because of its, its uh, being so plentiful in the Earth's crust, when you look at uranium and thorium reserves today, there's more uranium reserves than there is thorium reserves. The difference being when you look at the reserves of uranium, you're looking basically at 238, but only 0.72% of uranium 238 is uranium 235, which is fissionable in reactors. So now it, you suddenly see a different picture. Um, you've got at least one person that's been traveling around the country for almost 20 years talking about thorium. Um, there are these people that find something to ride uh, and they try to make a name for themselves, and but they don't quite tell the whole story. And uh, but the whole story is we're not ready for thorium yet. Uh, my guess is we will be ready for thorium in about ten years. While we're talking about when we're ready for something, let's talk about fusion for a moment. Fusion is a material science problem. We're not advancing material science like we should. And we haven't, we are not for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is we've had a downturn in commercial nuclear power, a downturn in defense, a downturn in aerospace, and a downturn in space itself. Back during the Reagan administration, we needed a, a material that would last under uh, operating conditions at just over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That material is still available today, but we haven't made any advances. What we need to do is we need to shift our money from fusion into fission. We need to shift our money from windmills into fission. We need to shift our money into bat from batteries into fission. We need to shift our money from solar into fission so that we have an economy that we can afford to do the material science work to make the advances that we need to have higher temperature materials. Good stuff. Anything you'd like to add to that, uh, Duberg? Yeah, the only thing I would say is um, uranium is dirt cheap. We're never going to have a shortage of uranium on a time frame that matters. And if we did have a shortage, the market signals would um, would trigger um, all of the many mothballed uranium mines around the world to start back up. And, and the, 
if, if you look at the percent of the cost of operating a nuclear power plant, um, you know, uranium could go up five to tenfold and it wouldn't matter. Um, but if uranium went up five to tenfold, you can bet your bottom dollar we'd be finding a lot more of it. And as Richard correctly pointed out, um, our nuclear waste, in fact, would very quickly become even more valuable. And we would um, recycle and, and deal with the proliferation issues that uh, sometimes this might present. But these are all very solvable problems. And I think um, by the time we run out of uranium, um, we're going to be, <laughs> I mean, all three of us will be long gone off of this planet. I can assure you of that.